Today's guest is Harlequin rugby player Archie White, who is from Epson and Yule. We'll be talking about the amazing semi-final game down at Bristol last weekend and be looking forward to the Gallagher Premiership rugby final at Twickenham this Saturday. It's amazing the connections that Harlequin's rugby club have with Epson and Yule. For example, uh, England and former Harlequin's player Carl Sinclair went to Epson College. Former England and Harlequin's player Nick Easter was born in Epsom. Plus, Mr Harlequin himself, who leads the team out with uh, top hat and flags at every game, is also a resident of the borough. So looking forward to talking to Archie and um, here's our interview. So, hi, Archie. Um, thank you very much for joining us today uh, for this chat. Uh, how are you feeling? How's things? Yeah, um, it's been it's been a good week, um, you know, making it to the final. And, you know, when th- the game on Saturday was unreal and, you know, just over the moon and really, really happy about, about everything that's going on at the moment. Well, a bit of an understatement. It's been a bit of a week. Um, so, Bristol away, for those who didn't follow, it was the semi-finals. Uh, amazing game. Um, you know, what was the atmosphere like? The atmosphere was crazy. It was probably one of the best events I've been to. Um, you know, I, I, as a spectator, I felt like a true fan. Um, I, I was actually lucky enough to be there when we won the Premiership and it felt like that. The crowd were unreal and um, definitely a 16th man on the day. It, it definitely made a difference. And we speak to the boys who played and they felt they felt the energy, they felt how much it meant to the fans and I think that just gets a lot of lads through you know the game went into extra time and that's when you need something something to to, to get you going and you know the fans definitely brought that that thing um, so yeah 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 it, it, it just you know and how do you feel and you know the rest of the guys you're in a final it, it's quite hard to understand it's quite hard to actually realise it's happening um, and it, it just it just puts a smile on my face it makes me so bad, so so happy um, and yeah, just just trying to just trying to understand it, but uh, yeah, it's um it's unreal. Brilliant, brilliant. So we we were travelling home. Uh, I've been away with my son Charlie. We were travelling home from uh, from Devon. He was watching it on the on uh, on my phone, and you know when he told me to score at half time, I was like, oh, that's it, it's um, game over. We won't stop anywhere. We we yeah. get on going. All I can say that must have been one hell of a team talk at half time. Is there anything you can repeat what was said? Um, if I'm honest, it's not it's not how I expected it would go. I thought it would have been, you know, um, lots of effing and and um, stuff like that. But um, it was actually very calm and collected. Um, we knew what we could do. We knew what we were capable of. We knew that we could score at any time. And you know, I think you know some of the tries showed that. You know, Dom's breakaway try, Jay Chizzy's breakaway try. We were in the game the whole time, and we just need to sort of just stick to what we do. And you know. It came true in the end, so I think that sort of leadership is is what was needed. I think there's times where you go off the handle, but I think that calm collective, we're in this, we can we can do this, and you know, it really worked. I think. So, so yeah. you're telling me Joe Joe Marler was was calm and collective. <laughs> well, he, he he must have been a little bit calm. I'm sure he was a little bit frustrated, but um, but yeah, I, I think I think I think the older lads really probably stood up and took a took a hold of the group and just showed us showed the younger lads the way. I, I think. Brilliant, yeah. absolutely. But it was brilliant in the way it all went into extra time, and we were, you know, and, it, and even at the very end, where you know we had to look at the uh, the replay what about yeah. the, the the final charm. Oh my, I had to find a lay by to pull in just to to watch <laughs> what was going on. Um, of course, we're talking about Harlequin win against Exeter in the final on Saturday. But how did how do you see the game going? I think it's, it's going to be tough, first first and foremost. It's going to be real tough. It's going to be a real different challenge to what Bristol presented. Um, a massively... Oh, my phone. Have I still got you? Yeah. Oh, I still got you? <laughs> Sorry, my phone. Yeah, um, yeah, massively um, different challenge to what Bristol brought, brought, brought to us. Um, they're way more confrontational, way more physical. Um, but I think, I think you know, we went down to Sandy Park at, at, at the middle of the season and we, we, we pushed into the line. And I think that just shows we can do them. We yeah. we have everything in us that we can actually we can get the win on on a Saturday. You know, it's basically a home event for us. So, 
you know, we'll take we'll take confidence into that and we'll take confidence into what just happened against Bristol. Yes, yeah. No problem at all. There. Um now as I said, you're local to Epson. You went to St. Christopher's School, uh, where my wife looked after you there in the in nursery and reception. Um, you know, what what advice um, you know, what sorry, jumping questions here. How did you get into rugby? What, did you play for any of the local clubs? Yeah, so um I actually did when I was real young, I did go-karting um to quite a high level. And then I just got a little bit too big for for, for getting into the go-karts. Um oh, so I, I have the up, same trouble now. I I've got too big <laughs> for everything. <laughs> um yeah, so just going to the, uh, go-karting and then from there a couple of friends from my school just invited me down to my local rugby club, Sutton Epsom, and um Played a few games, got did a bit of the training and just loved it, fell in love with it. Um, probably wasn't that good at it from when I was young, but just being with friends and being able to express myself and just run around and hit things and stuff like that, I think that was what got me hooked. Um, and then moved through through Sutton Nepsum, played for Surrey as a county, um, ended up getting a scholarship to Epson College from Glynn School. Um, and then, yeah, since then, I haven't really looked back. Just we just went through that way, and um, and you played for Glynn as well, did you? Yeah, I played for Glynn. Um, my coach, Mr. Hawks. Um, yeah, he uh, he helped me out massively um, in my in my younger days. When I, I sort of got to the decision where he was like to me, you know, this is something that you could do if you want to, you know, if you want to push on and and see how it goes. And yeah, that was the decision I made back in be it back in year ten, year eleven. So yeah, when I was real young. Um, Excellent. And then yeah, haven't looked back. Brilliant, brilliant. So, again, if any young boys and girls out there are just starting rugby or playing rugby at the moment, what advice would you give them? I would just say just enjoy it as much as possible. I look back to when I was younger and the the memories I have with the friends that I've made, you know, I still speak to lads that I knew when I first started school and stuff like that just through rugby. And I think you just got to, just got to embrace those memories and enjoy it as much as possible. Don't, don't worry about winning or losing, just to worry about making memories and being with friends I think that's so key and the things that come out of rugby are are massive as well you know I I suppose the parents out there as well you know you have that contact side and it is scary but the kids will massively benefit from it and the things they learn hard work and you know getting through stuff is is massive yeah brilliant great advice great advice um now I know you know a bit of a hard one you know, because it's sport. Not everyone can make it to the to the high levels like yourself. What do you think you would be doing if you didn't play rugby? A very tough question. Um, uh, I went through school and I, I enjoyed quite a few things. Um, I enjoyed uh, geography and I enjoyed, I think I'd have gone to university and studied probably geography. Um, probably would have changed course after I got bored with that after a year. Um <laughs> But yeah, I, I think I think something to do with the financial sector would have been quite interesting. Yeah. I've I've been doing some studies outside of rugby as well at the moment, um, and I enjoy it massively. And I think it's really interesting. Um, so yeah, something something within that would have been really good. Excellent. Well, Archie, I know you've got a really busy week ahead of you now. Uh, thank you very much for giving us your time. Looking forward to Saturday. I'm, I'm very lucky to be there on Saturday as well, cheering you and the guys on. Yeah, we're um, going to need we're going to need it. The 16th man, yeah. that's what we're going to need. You you're here, you're here, us. I'll, I'll make <laughs> sure. I'll give a special shout out. There we go. Well, that's thank, the one. thank you very much for your time, and uh, look forward to seeing you around town soon. Brilliant. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very yeah, much. Catch you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.